Rescue 117 is the Irish Coast Guard's rescue helicopter based at Waterford Airport. For six months, RTE cameras have followed this unit as they battle against the elements to save lives, often in perilous weather conditions. On this show, a baby in dire need of expert care. Rescue 117, I just in talking to the doctor, uh, there's been, been a bit of a complication. A late night emergency call from a ferry on the Irish Sea. Just to get the woman off first and uh, get the casualty with a double strap, okay? And a hazardous winch cable causes concern. The cable is damaged. It's got the cable some stick somewhere. Winter 2009 was one of the coldest on record. Ice and snow made roads treacherous. At the Waterford base, pilot Mark McDermott and his team are on shift. It's quiet, but as night approaches, all that changes. We got a call from Dublin, the tasking authority uh, from the Coast Guard, to say that they had a task for us, uh, if we would be willing to accept it, which was unusual. Uh, it wasn't a normal type of tasking, it was to take a very sick baby from Wexford Hospital uh, to Dublin. The baby was very unstable and without transfer to Dublin, uh, in all likelihood the, day, the baby wouldn't survive. The crew on duty are pilot Mark McDermott, co-pilot Ronan Flanagan and winchman Keith Devaney. This is an unusual job for the crew of Rescue 117 as the baby would normally be taken to Our Lady's Hospital in Crumlin by road ambulance, not by air but the roads are too bad and it will take too long. Road ambulance was unavailable because of the snow and the blizzards and likewise the Air Corps were unable to assist and this baby was in dire need of the specialist care that it would only get in Dublin. To that end, although it was something we normally wouldn't get involved in, uh, uh, there's very strict regulations governing uh, air ambulance operations. It was something that we felt very much needed to be done. The crew were determined that we could do, we should do whatever we possibly could to help this baby. The crew of Rescue 117 are requested to land at a local playing field. When we arrived and landed at the rugby pitch, we were told that the baby wasn't stable. Rescue 117, I've just been talking to the doctor. Uh, there's been, been a bit of a complication. They lost the baby there very, uh, for a little while, but they have found uh -huh. like They are stabilised, but they reckon it'll be half an hour to three quarters of an hour before they'll witch you over. Uh, Roger, that's copied. Uh, I understand our ground units uh, we're landed on at the moment. I'll go on your phone and try and get that information, but uh, thank you for that. The pilot now has a vital decision to make keep the engine running or switch it off in the freezing weather conditions. What our intentions are then is we will actually shut down and uh, if we will pass to the uh, doctor if they can call us before they uh, leave the hospital to bring the baby here, uh, just so we can make sure the aircraft starts up, starts up and there's no problems before they start transporting the uh, casualty. I didn't want to shut it down in that sort of cold because the last thing I wanted was not to be able to get off again quickly when they were ready for us. So we had to balance that and it's always a bit of a quandary, what do you do? So we shut down and we waited. But the whole time I was watching my watch and going 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and I'd actually say to the crew, when it comes to 45 minutes, I'm going to start the aircraft again because I want to keep it warm. An hour later, baby Isaac finally arrives at the playing field in an incubator. Because of the weather conditions, Rescue 117 is baby Isaac's only chance to make this life-saving trip. The incubator has to be strapped down and made safe for the flight. Uh, good show when you're ready to back up. All passengers are secure and our baby secure. secure, yes. Roger, all secure. OK, I'm lifting. 75. 100, 125, 150. Glasgow Coast Guard Radio Rescue 117 is now airborne from Wexford. Seven souls on board, one near and 
we are uh, in route to Balnao. Missing out 1667 and calls every 15 minutes over. I have two daughters and uh, when you have a job that involves young children it's very easy to imagine yourself either in the, the, the place of the parents or more commonly imagine that it's your child or it's just like your child and you have to cut away from that very quickly uh, because you know it is a very strong emotional uh, reaction and it wouldn't do us any good to have that distracting us especially in the environment in which we operate and in, in the manner in which we operate. Amidst snowstorms, Rescue 117 managed to make it from Wexford to Dublin in 40 minutes. OK, as briefed before, it's going to be a visual approach. That seems to be the runway running just to the left there. Yeah, just yeah. to the left, you can yeah, see the uh, landing lights. Yeah, we've got the puppies coming up. Baby Isaac is transferred to a waiting ambulance and taken to Crumlin Hospital. Please. Six months later, a surprise visitor to the base. Baby Isaac has made an excellent recovery and has come to meet the crew with his sisters Eliza and Juliet. Pilot Mark McDermott led the life-saving trip that gave Baby Isaac a fighting chance to survive. I mean, it was like he was made out of China. I mean, he was so pale. Looking very healthy now, yeah. Very healthy. <laughs> Especially when after uh, you hear that the baby survived the, the subsequent operations and is doing as well as can be expected, you have a massive sense of achievement and the whole crew uh, share in that. Saving lives and finding casualties lost at sea is what the Irish Coast Guard primarily trained to do, often late at night and in hostile weather conditions. Chief Pilot Dara Fitzpatrick and Training Captain Mark McDermott regularly discuss and check the training roster, which is called currency. We come on shift here at one o'clock and each of the crew will have a look and see, well, when's the last time we did everything? So I lasted a deck there deck training, whatever, on the 15th of August. So I'd be okay on that. But there might be other things that I haven't done for a while. So it's really up to yourself. To, it's your own responsibility, really, to see what you need to do. You're always trying to make a balance. You want your training to be realistic, but at the same time, you, you don't want to make it uh, unnecessarily hazardous for the individual. You know, there's nothing worse than, uh, you know, injuring someone on training. Today, winch operator Neville Murphy and winchman Mike Sandover are practicing winching on and off ship decks using a highline technique. We're, we're just approaching this vessel here now. It's about um, I just asked for permission. To, could we do an exercise with his vessel? Uh, he gave us permission, so uh, what we're going to do now is uh, go through, conduct a brief and a full exercise with Mike, uh, the highline and the, the stretcher. Roger, height. Yeah, shot about, uh, about 60, about 55 foot at the moment. Then to come down to 50 foot. Okay, uh, we'll drop down to 40 foot for Mike, I'll back up to 50 foot for the exercise. And uh, hazards, hazards to the vessel, we have the main wheelhouse, uh, we have the whip area on top there, which will be visual at all times. Roger, from here you are forward and I'm going to set up checking the winchman's equipment. Okay, you're leaving there for the second mark, it's not yeah. a Winchman's equipment is good. All right, you go controls. Bringing the winch man to the door. Right, At this point, the roar from the engines and the downdraft from the rotors makes conversation impossible. The winch man uses hand signals and a remote communication system called a polycom. Steady, steady, forward, right one. Just coming over the railing, steady, 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 winchman on the deck. Right target. Winching in as we go. Right target. You want to watch the Falicon while you keep uh, setting it off there. Roger. By using a high line, the amount of time the helicopter spends in the overhead is greatly reduced. Steady. It's about getting the job done in the fastest and safest time possible. Good position. Wait around the deck. Winchman has to wait. 
Back in this black out. Oh, it's towards the end. And there we are. Sorry. That's the highlight made out. Just gonna get the stretcher there. All right. Stretcher is good. Sure. Thank you. And check the winch. Check the winch. Stretcher gone out the door. And winching out. Forward and right two. Stretcher a good height. Forward and right one in. Back in this black out. The crew make it look easy, but on the day, even the best laid plans can have their problems. One false move and the winchman risks serious injury. It's a textbook training exercise and the crew are happy with a job well done. But it's never long before training becomes a reality. Coming up, a nighttime rescue mission on a ferry. We just got the test to uh, the ferry the Oscar Wilde over us there. Rescue 117 is the Irish Coast Guard's helicopter base in Waterford. RTE cameras have been following the team and their rescues as they unfold. For the Irish Coast Guard crew of Rescue 117, training is an everyday occurrence. Yes, had, Repeated exercises are vital to the crew, keeping their reflexes sharp, their minds alert, and their skill level up. Sarah so Hurley was airborne at this time with five souls on board. Total endurance is two hours of 14, two, one, four. The crew are doing habitual exercises near Tremor Bay and local areas. Almost immediately into the session, crewman Neil McAdam spots a potential problem with the winch, which should it go unchecked, would clearly have fatal consequences for his winchman. You see these bits here? There's actual gaps between the two strands there. Right, that's called board cage. The cable is damaged. Right. It's got to take it some stick somewhere. So when you see that, you can't go with that one. The helicopter has a backup winch, but the crew return to base immediately. Uh, Barry, we can't go anywhere we'll go. The cable is extremely important to the winchman, and it's, it's his life going to uh, the aircraft, and if that was to fail with him on it, you're talking about a catastrophic injury or certainly a spinal injury. So, um, absolutely, the cable is uh, the winchman's life going, and it's something that we take very seriously. The engineers are a vital part of the Waterford team and are on hand to fix the cable immediately. Engineer Brian Kelly has worked in Waterford since 2002. We have two engineers here every day on shift, from 7 in the morning to 9 at night. The avionic engineer takes care of the electrical instruments, systems on the aircraft, the engines, gearbox, the drivetrain, anything like that. This facility is purpose-built for us. It's everything we need for doing anything from minor inspections to major overhauls. We have a, a proper overhead gantry here that can be used for taking out engines and gearboxes. Well, this is our avionics workshop. This is just one component that's in. It's the searchlight off the aircraft. We have it in just for routine, non-destructive tests. That'll be reassembled over the next few days. Obviously, the aircraft has to keep flying, so we're refueling it constantly. Any time they come in, we're straight out the door. We would refuel it straight away so that if they do get a, a call out in the next five minutes, they're ready to go. Even though the engineers don't, don't fly with us for the, for the rescues, they are actually saving lives. They will be unsung heroes. You know, they're in the background, they're always working. They're the guys who actually keep us safe when we're in the air. So again, they're a huge part of the whole uh, helicopter search and rescue scenario. We couldn't fly without them. A late night call gives the crew of Rescue 117 an opportunity to put their deck training and highline manoeuvre to the test. We got a call from MRCC about, about 10 to 8 in the evening, uh, just after darkness there. We just got test to uh, the ferry the Oscar Wilde over Ross Lair. It's 20 miles to the east of Ross Lair. Hey, you are called your lights. Roger. Person secure the backlands. Lifting. Giving you full forward. The crew on duty are pilot Barry O'Connor, 
co-pilot Peter Mackenzie Brown, winch operator Neville Murphy and winchman Mike Sandover. There was an injured passenger on the ferry that goes from Rosnair to France. The indication first was that he had bleeding from his ear and high blood pressure, so we knew this was going to be potentially a serious one. 30 miles south of Kilmore Quay, the ship changes course towards the helicopter to save time. The weather wasn't getting any better, and he was going out to a more open sea. Obviously made more sense just to get him off, get him into a hospital and get him checked over. Yeah, we're going to go in front of him now. Good visuals, well clear of the vessel at this time. We're going to go for the winching spot there. How I think so, yeah, where the guy is where I am right now, I think we'll go for there. Steady, steady, steady. Good position, that's direct overhead, Bert. Hold your references. Roger, do you intend to get the woman off first and uh, then the casualty with a double strap, OK? OK. Sometimes uh, large vessels can actually move a lot more than you might imagine. If the deck is moving up and down 15 or 20 feet, then that gets quite difficult. Iron winchman ready to door. Roger. Check clear the winch. Clear the winch. Roger, winch you Mike out the door. You have to keep a constant height the whole time. If you start matching the vessel, you're going to induce a swing on the cable. So the winchman is then in danger of actually striking the vessel. Winching out. Forward one only. Steady, steady. Winching out. Mike is on the deck. I was led down to a cabin where the patient was and the nurse. She was uh, able to give me a very good handover of exactly what the problems were and what the patient's medications were and so on. Hi, how are you doing? Mike is my name. Now we're actually just going to winch you on board the aircraft and get you straight in. The crew decide to winch the casualty's partner as well as the casualty. The woman must be lifted 40 feet up to winch operator Neville Murphy. So we brought his wife with us as well. From our point of view, it can be very useful to have a partner who knows the full medical history to guard against the possibility that the patient themselves might go unconscious and all that information is lost. Check off the strain, good position, winching in fully now. Winching in. Just under the door. Good position there. And bring her in the door now this time. Mike returns for the casualty. What we're going to do is put one strap around your chest and another one under your knees. What that means is that you'll have to actually sit down on the deck, so you might get a little bit of a wet bum. Steady. Left one and back. Steady. Good position. Good position. Mike is pumped up. Pick up the slack. Winching it fully. Just under the door, bringing him up along the door. I'm coming in the door, and you're clear to move back and left away from the vessel. Well done, then. Roger. Rescue 117, Oscar Wilde, you on your way there, sir. Many thanks for your help and assistance. Much appreciated. I will have to you to uh, change your course back to your uh, normal passage, and I should say, fast, he's talking to you. The winch crew of Rescue 117 are trained paramedics. They do a number of tests on the casualty, as bleeding from the ear can be symptomatic of a more serious condition. Good, good, good visuals there. outside. Be there in about five minutes? About that, yeah. About ten yeah. pass will be landing. Bit of a headwind there enough. OK. On arrival at the playing field, the crew of Rescue 117 hand the casualty over to the other emergency services. The Irish Coast Guard crew of Rescue 117 are not always called out to save people. Sometimes when the other emergency services cannot retrieve a body, the Irish Coast Guard is called in. The Waterford crew have been tasked to a body retrieval. The crew on duty are pilot Martin Rayner, co-pilot Ronan Flanagan and winchman Eamon O'Brien. Yesterday evening we received a call from MRCC Dublin in relation to uh, doing a body search for an overdue person. Within minutes we were on scene and started getting information from the Gardaí that there was an object identifiable on a large mud flat area. 
we came up with a plan on how to take the casualty out of that area and then remove them towards the, the guardy that were waiting on the, on the bank close by. I went down and uh, observed that the casualty was not moving and lifeless at that stage. Once I was uh, lowered onto the mud flat, I immediately noticed that I was actually sinking. I had sunk up just past my knees into the very soft mud. We recovered a body and then made our transit of about a thousand or so metres across the mud flat into a, a field where there were awaiting guards of Chikana. And there was a quick handover with the guards uh, before I left the scene. Over the many years that I've been in search and rescue, I've dealt with many bodies in various conditions. You have to distract yourself from the emotional part of it while you're actually doing a job. It's only after uh, the rescue itself that you have time to sit back and uh, analyze the humanity of, of dealing with uh, dead and dying people. can be an emotional job you know we do on occasion see sites that aren't very pleasant um, you know on jobs but you know we come back come back as a crew you'll chat about it in a debrief maybe over the rest of the shift you might have another little chat about things but really from then you've just got to turn the page forget about it we've all dealt with it and just move on and be ready for the next job that's the main thing really we've got to do Coming up next time, the crew of Rescue 117 are called to an emergency at a house. We'll be carrying you out into the field and then winching you up and I'll be with you when we're winching up. And the helicopter is called to a medical evacuation on a ferry. Which one has the who? Steady. Steady. Conversation. 